And welcome back to the Sports Source. This segment of our program brought to you by Madisonville Marine. There's no better place to buy a boat. That's because their selection of boats, makes, models, styles, uh, is unmatched in East Tennessee. If you want to look at deck boats and fishing boats and pontoon boats, you don't have to go to three different dealers. They got them all right there at Madisonville Marine. Their prices are great, and their customer service has kept people coming back there for 45 years. Folks like Bob Hodge. Bob, you're a fan. There you go. Madisonville Marine, folks. Madmarine.com to learn more. Find them Highway 411 North in Madisonville. All right, it's clear that Tennessee has hired an expensive uh, big-name law firm to come in and dig around into the football uh, department. The popular theory has been that UT wants to get rid of Pruitt after a three and seven season, but they don't want to pay the big buyout. Therefore, they bring in the same group that dug into Bruce Pearl in that situation, um, and they hope to find some way to cut him without paying. But it, you have to say it's a possibility that Philip Fulmer hasn't changed his mind on Jeremy Pruitt, that Philip Fulmer is still adamant that this is the guy, that it's a five-year rebuild. I've said that all along. It's going to take time. Plowman agrees with Fulmer. Boyd agrees with Fulmer. They want to keep Jeremy Pruitt. And this law firm has been brought in to tie it up in a nice, neat bow around an assistant's neck so you can keep Jeremy Pruitt. That is a possibility. There are people who believe that is the case. Which is more likely? The fact that they are... Vince, I'll start with you. The, what's more likely? The fact that they hired this group in the hopes of ridding themselves of Pruitt and his buyout, or they hired this group to find a way to keep Jeremy Pruitt? I think, even though it wasn't one of your choices, I think it's more likely that they didn't have their mind made up prior to. Eh, you have to do one or the other. <laughs> what is more likely, A or B? Don't cavalier us the question. I would say it's more likely that they were looking for a, a way to get out of the contract cheaper and get out and separate uh, at a much lower price because that hangs over with everything that happened in 2020. I think that's something, the financial aspect of it, that is a big concern for those that, um, that maybe wanted him out, that it hasn't been on their side. So this is a way, exploring it at least, uh, to look into it. So I think of one of the two, I think that would be the more likely of the two. Here's how I know you've asked a really good question. It, how would Cavaliers answer it? <laughs> so that's, uh, I, I'm going to kind of side with Vince. I, I do think that when this thing started, obviously somebody within the program came up and turned them in and said, hey, this stuff's going on. And I have been told that there are some people in the administration that are ready and willing to make a change. So I'm going to go with that option. So rather than fight to keep him, I think that there's probably an effort to see if they can get rid of him at a mitigated buyout. I'm going to go way into that they're not trying to keep him, they're trying to get rid of him. I don't even, I don't even think it's close. I, you went into the season, high expectations, high hopes anyway, maybe not expectations. You won your first two games. You got, what, ranked number 13 in the country after two games? And that's with a lot of teams not ranked because they weren't Still, playing at that point. Yeah. But then when the wheels came off, and really, really, I mean, the wheels came off, once again, I go to halftime of Georgia. That was the high water mark for me. Um, I, I, I don't think I have seen anything. If you're trying to save him, you're, you're helping him. You're throwing a life preserver out there. You're doing something other than letting than, him twist in the wind. Yes, yeah. exactly. I, I just don't see how, if this, is, if this is what they're doing to help you, Boy, let's see what they're going to do if they do decide to hurt you. That's why if I'm Jeremy Pruitt and they wind up keeping me after this, I'm going to be ticked. I mean, happy yeah. that they kept me. And let's say, look, it's a possibility that maybe he's thankful that they kept him because he, he really, they really could have gotten him, but they wanted to save him and they saved him. I think it's much more likely that they've let him twist, and, and, uh, and if he stays, he would harbor some ill will to that because he's lost double-digit transfers, and I know you've got a couple of them, but you've got a lot of guys leaving. And for all the talk of, oh, you haven't lost any stars, no, but you've lost starters. And when you're on a three and seven football team and these are the guys that are starting, doesn't it make you question who's behind them? So I wouldn't, I wouldn't mm -hmm. sneeze at any of these guys point. leaving. Uh, but if he succeeds after this, after being left out there, people transferring, your coaches don't know if they're staying or going. If he succeeds, then he's going to deserve that raise that Philip Fulmer will no doubt give him. <laughs> so <laughs> that yeah. UT will yeah. turn around and give him. The extension they'll yeah. hand him as soon as he's survives. Here's the reason I'm not quite as strong as, as Bob is on this is because if he's got Philip Fulmer in his corner, everything indicates that, how strong is Fulmer on this? Is he strong at all? Is he, is he acquiescing to the administration? Is it Plowman? Is it Boyd? Is it Board? 
I, I don't know. So, but because I think Fulmer's fighting for him, that's why I'm not quite as strong as Bob is on that. Well, don't you think with, with, with Coach Fulmer's past history, though, I mean, the, 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 he knows how to work channels and do things. Mm -hmm. if, if that's the case, if he's in there really fighting, I would, I would think at some point in time that would have came out. I mean, sideways somewhere, it's going to come out that if he's in there and, and really fighting for Coach Pruitt, I just wonder if, if Coach Fulmer now is not sort of just like, Okay, let's see what happens. This is this He's is, read the writing on the wall. It's almost it's almost like bread with too much yeast in it. It's gotten so big now. How do you control it? Or maybe he's read the notes from the investigation. That's yeah. I mean, that, that's that's possible. Well, maybe that he would say, okay, that I, I can't defend this anymore. Yeah. Possible. Maybe Glazier didn't write a report. Maybe he wrote it on a wall. Maybe he wrote it on the rock. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we all know that's right. a stupid rock. Uh, the rock, by the way, this that recently was painted to say fire Pruitt, fire Fulmer. That's my next question. What happens with Philip Fulmer? Even let's say the fans get their wish, the, the fans who want Pruitt out. Let's see those fans get their wish. That means there's NCAA issues. What do you do with Philip Fulmer then? Come on back on the sports source.